In this presentation, we will take a look at the transaction related to the recording of cash dividends. We're going to have our information up top. We're going to record that to our general journal here and then post that not to the general ledger, but to a quick worksheet, which can show us the effect on the accounting equation and individual accounts. Our trial balance is a very simple trial balance, but one that is in balance and will give us a good idea of the effect on the accounting equation and uh, the components of it and individual accounts. We've got the cash in green, we've got the liabilities in orange, we've got the equity section in light blue and the income statement, including revenue and expenses, in dark blue. Debits are going to be positive numbers, credits uh, negative numbers for purposes here. Debits minus the credits equal zero, represented by the green zero down here. No net income because there's nothing currently in revenue and expenses. Again, it's really helpful for us to see just a, a nice something that's in balance <laughs> to record any type of transaction so that we can see the effects. What we have here then is a $2 per share cash dividend declared. So this is the point of declaration that we have a cash dividend. The board of directions got together, board of directors got together and declared a cash dividend of $2 for uh, per share. What that means is that anybody that however many shares are out there, anybody that has the, uh, the stock should get a $2 dividend for however many stocks they have. And remember the only differentiation between the, the ownership here is the number of stocks they have, the stocks all being uniform. So in the equity section of the trial balance, we're not listing out the owners here. We don't need to list out the owners. All we need to do is, is list out the uh, amount that's the investment common stock here versus the retained earnings that have accumulated over time. And then we just need to be able to distribute the number, the, the, this dividend to the, the stockholders based on how many stockholders there are. So to record the transaction, we, we need to first to know, well, how many stockholders are there? And we can see that here, if there's a par value on the trial balance, we can say, okay, there's 600,000 600, recorded in the, in the uh, common stock divided by the par value, $5, there's 120,000 shares then. And we're gonna give $2 per share. So we'll take that and multiply times two, and that gives us the $240,000. So that's gonna be the dividend that we are going to pay out. So we're going to pay it out of retained earnings. Now you might first think, well, why don't, why don't we deal with cash first? We can decrease cash. Note that cash is not happening yet. We will pay the cash, but it's a bureaucratic process. We're not paying the cash yet. What we're doing first is taking it out of retained earnings and recording the related uh, liability that we will record. Note that the, the retained earnings has a credit balance and retained earnings can be confusing if, if we've been working with a partnership or a sole proprietor uh, where we would just work with a capital account. Note that this whole thing is just basically a capital account. And so the retain this whole thing's, you know, the capital account owed to the owners, the, all the owners being stockholders. It's broken out between the investment and the amount of accumulation of revenue called retained earnings. So when we pay back the owners, we don't want to take it out of the investment. We want to take it out of the accumulation of revenue called retained earnings. Now, if we see a, a partnership or a sole proprietor, we might record that as draws throughout the time period, which we then close out to retained earnings at the end. We could do the same thing here. We could make a contra uh, account, which we'll, which we'll actually do later to show the closing process in that format, just to give it more transparent. But we could just have another like contra equity account, which would be called dividends, which would be a debit balance account, which we would then close out in the closing process to retained earnings or we could just directly take it out of basically retained earnings, which we are doing here. So we're gonna reduce retained earnings. Retained earnings has a credit balance representing the value of the company uh, that has accumulated over time, less any, retained, and less any dividends prior to this. And we're gonna do the opposite thing to it to make it go down. Then we're gonna credit the uh, common dividends payable, which is gonna be a liability. We owe this money. We're not crediting cash yet. We haven't yet paid it. We're gonna credit the payable. So if we record this, then we see that the retained earnings has a debit balance. We're gonna record this 120 to it. I mean, it's sorry, retained earnings has a credit balance. We're gonna record the debit to it, which will make it go down. We're reducing the, the accumulation of earnings over time, less the amount that has been distributed uh, or declared at least at this point. 
The other side going to the uh, zero amount of the payable, common dividends payable at zero, it's going up in the credit direction by 120 to 120. So here's our transaction. Uh, we increase or we decrease the retained earnings and we said we have a payable. Note what we have not done. We haven't done anything to net income here. So nothing, nothing is happening to net income. This is gonna be very similar to basically a draw that we would have for a sole proprietorship or partnership where we would debit the draw typically to another account, but it's still an equity account. And then we would credit cash. But in this case, because it's more bureaucratic, we haven't paid the cash yet and first need to debit or credit the um, common dividend payable. So instead of crediting cash right away, we got to first say, hey, we've committed to this and credit the payable. So what is happening now is we, we've said we, we're going to reduce the retained earnings at this time because we've committed to it. And then we're going to say that we haven't yet paid it. We're going to pay it at a later time. Then when that later time happens, we're going to pay it off. Now, note there's a there's a period in between that we're going to have to determine, you know, who's going to get paid. Like, so we have to say what date. Um, on what date are people actually holding the stock that are trading all the time going to get paid? There's no transaction related to that point in time. We just have to know who we're going to pay. Basically, if stocks are trading all the time, who owned it at this point in time, that's who's going to get paid. Then we're going to pay it at some point in time. That's going to record another transaction. When we pay it, we're going to pay it with cash. So cash has a debit balance. We're going to make it go down. We're going to pay the 120 that we owe to the stockholders based on the dividend we already recorded. The other side is going to be the common dividends payable. This payable, 120000 just like any payable, we owe it. It's a credit balance. We need to make it go down because we're going to pay it. So we'll do the opposite thing to it, a debit. So if we post this out then, cash, let's have this credit. We've got uh, the 1388000 going down by 120 credit to $1,268,000. And then we've got this payable here, the 120,000, it's going down by 120 to zero. So now the dividend has finally been paid, the payable's back down to zero. So the full transaction, uh, what in essence happened here is we reduced the retained earnings, we reduced the equity section, and we paid out the money to the owner, just as we would for any kind of payment if it was a sole proprietorship or a uh, partnership, however, instead of paying just one partner or one owner we're paying the corporation stockholders in accordance with their shares the payments to them all being the same in accordance with their shares whoever owns a stock gets a two dollar uh, payment for however many stocks that they own so if we look at the stockholders equity section then again we've got the common stock five dollar uh, par par value we've got 150 authorized we have 120 shares still out there. This didn't change. We've got the 600,000, nothing changed there. We haven't had any more investment and we haven't like sold any stocks. The paid in capital, no effect on the paid in capital. So the investment portion didn't change. What did change is the retained earnings, the accumulation of revenue, what we've earned over time, less what we have paid out to the owners. That is, is the uh, number that's going down when we pay out this information. So just remember that when we talk about a corporation, we usually break it out between the investment and uh, the retained earnings. The retained earnings is what we're gonna pay out of when we give the dividends, which are similar to draws. We're not gonna give the dividends from the initial investment, from the, from the initial investment from the purchasing of the stock. We're gonna pay it out of the accumulation of earnings over the life of the business. So we're at total earnings of 1,248. And again, remember what that means. It just means that if we only had one person owning all the stock of the corporation, then we would have the 600,000 plus 110,000 plus the 538. We would owe that owner that total amount, 1,248. 538 would be from earnings. 710 would be from the investment that that owner put in when purchasing the stock this number being equivalent to the 1,268 minus the 20,000 or assets minus liabilities.